video is just a real quick follow-up on a prior video that I did that compared the VanQuest Javelin 2.0 to the Maxpedition Sitka. One of the problems that I had with the VanQuest was that the buckle was a three-prong design. So, in other words, there were the side prongs that inserted into the rest of the buckle, but there was also a third button which created a situation for me where it really required two hands to get the buckle undone and that bothered me because I typically like to use one hand to undo the buckle while I use the other hand to grab onto the strap to take it off and in this case you can't do that and it's pretty awkward to try to hit that third part of the button to split it off. Now VanQuest reached out to me directly and gave me an idea for a modification that would actually solve that problem so I'm going to move ahead and perform the modification, show you what I did, and show you the result. Now when you observe the actual buckle, this piece here makes up the third button, I guess you'd call it, that you needed to press in order to release the buckle. And so you can see there's an attachment point down here. Now they've suggested one of two things, either bending this out of the way to the point where you bend it out so far that you're actually able to sort of bypass it and it won't click into place um, or they said removing it all together and that's what I'm gonna do today I'm gonna see if I can get a small tool in here that will allow me to actually remove the button altogether. now no matter what I do I want this to look intentional you know I don't want this to come out all jagged and ridiculous you know I like my things to be neat and at least making a modification to something takes a certain level of craftsmanship and I tend to take pride in what I do, so I'm going to try to find the right tool to do this without marring up all the rest of the buckle. So, I've been playing around with a couple different ideas. I thought maybe I could use like an oscillating plunge tool, but that blade is much too large to get in there. The next thing I thought was maybe I could get myself a real nice, fine little... Um, you know, fine tooth jigsaw blade and uh, kind of do it by hand. But that doesn't seem like it's going to work so swell. So I've been racking my brain on what I thought I could get in there to do that tight little work. Now if you flip this over to the back side of the buckle, you'll notice it might be a little bit easier to work on. So for example, if you look at this side, it has like a big hump right in the middle of it, right where I need to cut that thing. On the back side, it also has a hump, but it's a little less pronounced, so I think this would be the easier side to work from. And plus, too, if my tool slips and makes any little gouges, at least I'm doing it on the hidden side of the buckle. Now what I think I've ultimately decided to do is use a punch to make a centering hole right where I want to make the separation in this button. So right in this area. I'm going to use the punch to make a nice little centering hole and then I think I'm gonna get a very fine drill bit and I'm gonna drill a first hole just to get it started and then I'll step it up until I get to a um, you know a diameter of a drill bit big enough to actually separate the plastic alright so first things first I'm gonna find my mark exactly where I want to punch this and I'm gonna get it as close as I can to perfect. And I think that'll do it. So now that I have my spot punched, I'm going to go get my drill bit. So now I've selected a drill bit that I think is probably the final size that I'll need. Now the good thing about the bit that I chose is it has a really nice point. Um, this is actually a drill bit made for wood, but I don't care, I'll drill plastic, how hard could it be? And so I'm going to run the drill in reverse so that I kind of score the plastic before it grabs and starts yanking this thing all over the place. So I'm going to run it in reverse and hopefully keep it right in that punch mark. And from there, I'll start to see what I'm going to get. Now I'll go forwards. Just 
check out what I'm getting here. That looks like it's going to be really good. So I'm going to move forward now with finishing drilling this thing out. It has wandered on me just a tiny bit, but I'll be careful and I'll try not to mar up the rest of this buckle. Yeah, it's definitely slipping. That's almost through. And it's through. So now I have the meat of the button removed and I'll just take some a little bit of sandpaper in there and kind of clean this up and I'll show you what the final result looks like when I'm done. All right, so there you have it. It's certainly not perfect. I mean, I see a little tiny fleck of uh, plastic still sticking off, so I might uh, clean that up with a razor knife or something real quick. But let me finish this up, and then we'll try the bag on and see if that modification worked. All right, so here we go, the moment of truth. Let's see if this thing works. Nice click. No third button. Releases like a charm. That sounds pretty good. So now, bang. You know, I can get this thing off in a hurry, which is the way I like to carry it. So, I would say, uh, all things considered, that's a pretty good success. So, thank you VanQuest for the, uh, for the idea. I uh, think that worked out pretty well. Hope you guys like that modification. I hope you found that informative. I'd like to say thank you for stopping by and checking out my channel. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.